Have you read this one yet? I did. Let me tell you a few things about it. Okay, everybody. So today we're talking about the library, subtitled A Fragile History. It's uh, uh, written mainly by Andrew Pedigree, and it was co-authored by uh, Arthur Dervedevin. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I'm probably not. Um, and I had actually uh, seen this book around for quite a while. I think it was published in 2021, probably the early part of 2021. And I thought the cover was just beautiful. Um, I mean, just look at that. Who doesn't want to sit there and spend the day? And um, uh, I had gotten about knee deep into this book until I realized that uh, it had been written by Andrew Pedigree, an author of the previous book I had just gotten through. It took me you know, I'd had this for several days by the time I got around to reading it and didn't even realize they were written by the same people. So that was kind of funny. It's very much like The Book at War, uh, which just came out probably a few months ago in the latter part of 2023. And um, what's really good, I, I would recommend that if you're if you're a real bibliophile, I mean, this, this it's kind of drier material. you got to understand this is material that's... Um, you know, it's like catnip for bibliophiles or those with sundoku, you know, just you love your books. This is for you. I would start out with the library, uh, not just because, you know, he wrote that first, but you're going to find that you get, uh, he touches on, I don't know, the latter third of the book. Uh, he touches on sort of the modern era from, uh, you know, the antebellum civil war period up until the end of the Cold War and sort of how conflict uh, shaped literature and how literature shaped uh, conflicts even, you know, the ideologies and things like that. If I'd started with this book, you'd have the sense that, you know, you're, you've got a lot of continuity, you know, it, it, you, you touch on a lot of things and then uh, in the, uh, the book at war, you would get a lot more de detail of, of um, you know, what happened in modern times and some of the, the, the low points um throughout the 20th century for the most part i did like this book i think i rated it four stars on goodreads i probably rounded up to four stars because i was i felt a little bit out of my depth with this one in fact i'm going to talk about another book uh in a few days that i had read i don't know this was about five or six books later it's called um the bookseller of florence uh written by ross king and it almost seems like one heavily influenced the other one. I think the Ross King book had come out before this, just just briefly. I'm not sure, but uh, it was. I should have actually looked through the endnotes to see, you know, if if they were referencing each other. Uh, they probably were. There were certain characters like you know Vespasiano through uh, the Renaissance period that uh, you know were mentioned in here and, and heavily talked about in in the other book. It's not a terribly long, it, it looks bigger than it is. Uh, it's probably, I think it came out at 480 some pages, I guess. If you have no real interest in, you know, the Enlightenment or the Renaissance, you, you're probably going to be struggling through the first two thirds of this book, I'd say. But I would highly recommend reading this book just for the facts he presents surrounding uh, the modern era and how, how books have really shaped conflicts and how conflicts have shaped books. Getting into the first part of the book, he was speaking sort of the, the old ancient libraries, you know, some of the first that, that archaeologists have uh, come across and the construction of the books therein, you know, generally out of uh, either vellum or papyrus. You see a lot of really ancient works and then as you get into, into here, you know, you start to see how the curation and the, the construction of books changed over the years. It speaks a lot, too, about the evolution of libraries themselves, where people go to do most of their reading. So it started out being a very rich, uh, kind of a luxurious uh, stamp collecting kind of hobby in the beginning, that people would pay a lot of money for something that was, you know, beautifully bound especially if there was some scholarship that went into it and translating the book from uh, one old or dead language to a modern language. Um, you know, and that, most of that happened around the, the Renaissance period. What, a, what came of the losses, you know, um, and various wars throughout the ancient uh, world and, and leading into the Renaissance, just what kind of losses there were in, in human knowledge. 
which is actually kind of gripping when you think about it. It sort of talks about these guys that uh, we, we owe a lot of modern literature to, you know, we would have lost them altogether if, um, if it weren't up to these uh, scribes and these scholars who are so meticulous in their uh, preservation of some of these ancient texts. Then it gets into, you know, like the library as an institution itself. I didn't realize that, you know, the first public library as such really only came to be a thing in like 1699, you know, uh, where I think it was in Scotland was the first one and where, uh, you know, it was actually financed by the state. Um, and the kind of books that they put in there certainly wasn't like, you know, today where fiction takes up a lot of it. You know, we've got a whole young adult category that didn't, didn't even really exist back then. Um, but for the most part, I mean, even in 1699, you would think that, you know, once the first one came along, it, it became sort of standard fare for governments to, uh, you know, sponsor these, these libraries. But actually reading rooms were, were, you know, reading rooms and gentlemen clubs were where um, libraries had, you know, the biggest reign, if you will, uh, for hundreds of years. It was really only uh, America that popularized it in the early 20th century, where states started to, it just became like a standard thing that, well, you know, you're a country. If you want to call yourself a country, you got to have some libraries, you know. And I really, I really appreciate that. You know, uh, some of you who know me coming from a fundamentalist cult uh, out of my, my young adulthood, um, it really was the public library that rescued me. Uh, even though I had an appreciation for books, um, it was sort of seen like, you know, we already have the best education. Why would you need to go to the library? That was sort of how it was seen, right? But for me, you know, the public library, I, I, I have a profound debt of gratitude to, uh, you know, the modern state just providing that to people. We have access to so much information. And, and of course, we're seeing the library as an institution evolve. And he talks a little bit about this getting into the modern era, um, you know, with e-readers and, uh, and the changing landscape of what people are reading and you know how certain libraries have adapted i know in victoria for example where i'm based out of here it's a very healthy public library scene um but yeah for for hundreds of years prior to that it was reading rooms you know people would pay uh, uh you know quite a substantial amount of their yearly salary just to have access to these rooms and it was generally uh you know uh, elitists that had access to that sort of reading because, uh, and you know, he talks a lot about the rise of literacy th uh, through, through the centuries. It made me profoundly grateful for the time that we live in that we have access to all this stuff. Really, the only reason, the only excuse why people don't read books is because they they're not crazy about them, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, to each his own, right? But uh, I I really appreciate it. So. Uh, I would recommend this to those of you who really love books. I mean, if you're tuning into me because you're on BookTube, you're probably, you know, in the market for something like this. Uh, tell me in the comments what you think of it, uh, if you've seen this around and not gotten around to it, or for those of you who have gotten around to it, if you have any uh, comments on it or if there's any questions I can answer, uh, I'd love to talk to you down there. Thanks for stopping by. Hey everyone, I hope you liked this video. If you want more like the one you just watched, click the suggested video on this screen. Make sure you subscribe, and to connect with me on my other platforms, my handles are linked below in the description, all right? Take care, peeps. Till next time.